It's Edmonton's podcast on the Canada's Podcast Network. Today's guest is Jamie Saleh, who is motivational coach and speaker in Edmonton and a former world champion and Olympic gold medalist uh, in figure skating. Thanks for joining us today, Jamie. Thanks, Mario. Happy to be here. Okay, let's start, Jamie, just uh, telling us a little bit about yourself after figure skating, basically what you're doing these days uh, in, in terms of work and being an entrepreneur. Uh, that's a great question. Um, so I retired, it'll be eight years ago this June, and um, I spent about three years being a stay-at-home mom. That was also a dream of mine to be able to provide for the family and, and stay home and take care of the kids and, and obviously build a home. And then um, I started waking up feeling like there's something more for me. There's something kind of really itching to be expressed. And I, um, I reached out for some support and help because I didn't understand really what that would be. And soon after I started working on my vision again, uh, because I, my whole life I had designed my dream of becoming an Olympic gold medalist or Olympic skater. And so I realized that I was kind of living my life by default at that point, just sort of going through the motions and drifting around as much as I was living my dream at that time as well there was still something that I wasn't um, serving and that was my purpose, my greater purpose and my why. And so I wrote down help people in my vision and I still didn't understand what that meant, you know, on a bigger scale. And then I saw somebody speaking on a stage one day and it just hit me like fireworks. And I went, well, that's exactly what I want to do. I, I enjoy public speaking. I enjoy connecting with people. And since I'm a little girl, I've always loved helping people. And it would just be even, um, you know, if they were struggling in skating or they were struggling with something at home, I was always, um, you know, happy uh, to go and, and sit with those people and, and talk to them. And I was never told to do this. I just always felt the need to do it. Mm -hmm. And so this really hit me hard. And so I went just kind of taken off from there. I'm doing some executive coaching with, uh, I'm a partner with Envision Group International out of Calgary and um, working with individuals and helping them live a life that they would love and creating a vision. That's what one thing that I've really seen with people that they're not um, entirely um, understanding of the importance of a vision. And it doesn't mean you have to be an Olympic gold medalist, but what would you love in your life is the question that I ask everybody. Tell me, uh, uh, Jamie, uh, when you look at, um, uh, I guess, setting up a business and being an entrepreneur in Edmonton. What are the advantages of being an entrepreneur uh, right now in, in Edmonton? Uh? Well, I think right now, um, for me, the advantages is my mindset and that I'm using this opportunity or this time to create opportunities. And I, I see this as a really great time to tap into my creativeness and I'm constantly asking myself, you know, thinking outside the box, what can I do with this situation to make myself a better coach? I have great tools that I've learned throughout my skating career that got me to the level and the success that I've had. Um, but, you know, being able to transfer that into life now and helping other people live that dream, I think is, is really powerful. So what can I do today? And so I've really learned to tap into things that are forcing me to step outside my comfort zone right now, because I'm not used to this zoom calls and and making these videos as much as um i have been so um for me it's just really i know that's kind of not maybe the answer you were expecting but i feel like um nobody really has an advantage economically right now <laughs> i would say but it's really mindset and 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 not pitching a tent in the condition and saying hey there's going to be some great stuff that comes out of this and i'm going to choose to find the good in this mm -hmm. what's your vision for for your business as you uh, look forward and into the future. You want to know what my big vision is? Yeah. <laughs> so in my vision that I've written down, I am speaking, uh, I'm speaking internationally on stages. Um, so across the world and inspiring or empowering people, whether it's corporate or it's individual. Um, it's always been a dream for mine to, um, as I said at the beginning, to help people. So I really want to help people on a bigger scale. And I feel that being able to share my Olympic journey with people in my life journey. I've got so many other uh, situations or circumstances in my life that created what people call or we call failure in my life. And how did I overcome that? Um, and most people don't understand that just because people are successful doesn't mean they don't have fear and they don't have failure. 
So my thing is to be able to take that on a grander scale and really help people understand that fear and failure are just prerequisites for great achieving great dreams. Now, what is, uh, has been, I guess, the greatest challenge you face in, in being an entrepreneur? <laughs> fear. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, my biggest challenge even today is, is just fear. Fear is constantly talking to me. And, um, and I, I literally hear, vo I literally, like, it's like I hear this little devil sitting on my shoulder going, why would anybody like that, Jamie? If you put that out, nobody's going to even like it or they're not going to resonate with that or you're not good enough. I hear all kinds of voices right now when I'm creating content or I'm putting stuff out there. So my biggest challenge is to to know that that is just that fear is just there to tell me that I'm on my growing edge and that I'm doing the right things. So again, it's just going back to what did I how did I overcome it as an athlete? Well, I just said to it, I hear you, but I'm doing this anyway. And so that's what I'm working through right now. And I've worked through in the beginning and I know I'm going to work through till till the day I'm I'm gone. Yeah. So when you look back over your uh, career in sports, mm -hmm. um what are the lessons you learned through sports that have been helpful for you as a business person? Oh, well, we talk about them when we do our public speaking engagements. And, you know, it starts with, um, you know, perseverance, uh, being able to persevere through, through adversity and, and the challenging times. Because most of the time when I was skating, it was challenging and it was uncomfortable. So it was learning to persevere through those times that were even more uncomfortable than others. Um, and really being committed. Um, that is one thing that I feel today, like a discipline. I had incredible discipline because I will tell you, I was passionate about figure skating. So now I'm passionate about helping people. And that's what's really important when you're talking about a career for people. What lights you up, right? Because if you're not loving what you're doing, it's pretty hard to be disciplined, yeah. right? And be motivated. So I love what I do. But there are days where, you know, it's easy to sit there and go, well, I'll do it later. We all have those those moments of that, that thinking coming into our head. So staying disciplined um, and focused. Um, and I think it's just really important to, to know that fear, like fear is a big one. So that's why I talk about it a lot. Um, but being able to speak to that is one of the greatest tools that I've learned in my skating career because I heard it, I heard it all the time when I was skating. I would hear it when I was skating into my jumps or when I was going into a throw. I would have, you know, that little voice on my shoulder going, what if you miss this? And what if you don't win this competition? Uh oh, I hope you don't fall. And it's crazy. So now I just, I've learned how to speak to that and say, it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing this anyway. Uh, when you look back, um, you know, since you started doing this, um, what's the best piece of advice you've received on being an entrepreneur? Um... That's actually a really good question. I, you know, I think really being, staying authentic to who you are. Sometimes I feel like I need to be someone else that I really admire or I look up to and I look at what they're putting out or they're doing and I go, oh, but I'm not them. And so I'm reminded constantly by my mentors and teachers that Jamie, but you are you and not everybody that is out there that's coaching or giving advice or whatever resonates with everybody. So everyone's got their gift and their tools. So really important to stay authentic to who you are and be real. Uh, connect with the people who you want to attract, right? You attract your tribe. And also the re most recent one that I've, I felt was really valuable was to pay attention to where you are getting your most uh, connections for, on the social media platforms because, um, it, you know, there's lots of them now. And I, I don't think there's, it's a waste to spend more time necessarily on one. It's not a waste but I've learned that there are certain um, platforms for me, for what I do, that are um, creating the proper connections that I need to help me grow my business. So that was something I, I, didn't, I wasn't really aware of. I just thought I should be on all of them. Um, and yeah, I, I just think I, I need to spend more time on, for example, LinkedIn, where you and I met. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and uh, so, you know, let's sort of uh, talk about today and, uh, you know, and uh, the challenges uh, that obviously the coronavirus has, has presented to people. Um, first of all, how has that affected you and what you do? 
Um, to be honest, it really hasn't affected me very much at all. Um, again, I think in just my home, we're all quite positive. We're, we love connecting. We love spending the time together. Yeah, we have our moments because we all are missing people and hugging and, and going out and, and the kids are missing their activities. But um, we are enjoying this time together for sure. And, um, but I, I can coach from home and I always have. So over the phone or like this through Zoom. So it hasn't changed really anything that way for me. If anything, it's helping me put myself out there even more because people are needing help now more than ever. They're needing support um, to know how to cope through this, how to navigate. And so I feel like it's actually really helped me <laughs> and helped my business. So what's your, uh, you know, when people, uh, you, you know, you talked a lot about fear uh, before, uh, obviously lots of fear now, what is some advice or guidance you would give entrepreneurs as they navigate these troubled waters that we're, we're, we're going through right now? That's, you know, the most important thing I feel that I wake up with every day is gratitude. And if I was talking to any of my entrepreneurial friends, I would say, you know what, guys, it's, I know that this is challenging and this feels like we don't, we can't see the end of it. There's so many unknowns and uncertainties, but I think the most important thing is to wake up every day and go to bed with gratitude. There, there is always something to be grateful for, always. And there's always somebody who's worse off, right? We, we know that. And I think really important right now to have faith. And we, we often hear the word hope. I personally prefer the word having faith because hope is a beggar. Having faith is believing that you will get through this stronger than you were before it happened. Yeah. And Right. And that's, and, and that's worked for me because um, having faith is really about believing in the greater good and believing that there's going to be some good out of this. And I always tell my friends, you know what, you need to write down that you refuse to get the gift from this. Mm. What is that gift? We don't know yet, but know that there is a gift and, and embrace that. And so you can ride this, this uncomfortable time with grace and dignity and just staying positive. And the most important thing I'm finding right now, Mario, is really people um, are really consumed with media, as yeah. you know, right? And not that media is a bad thing, but if you're watching too much and getting too absorbed in the negativity, it really affects your physiology. And so people are starting to show aggression instead of love and, and coming from empathy and compassion. And we need to be informed, but it's like, it's really... I, I'm seeing that it's affecting people uh, in tremendous ways of um, changing their demeanors and their attitudes. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at that uh, is in my connection. Yeah, I, I'm just curious, uh, you know, um, obviously, as an athlete, uh, you know, you faced a lot of disappointment, even though, you know, you reached a certain pinnacle and, and, and high. Yeah, you know, along the way, you've, you know, you had a lot of disappointments, a lot of failures, probably, you know, et cetera. Um, you know, can you talk a little bit about what you learn through hardship that, that gets you, you know, uh, uh, to reaching a goal and, and maybe tie it into what we're talking about right now with COVID? Yeah, I just, what I learned was that um, any kind of failure or disappointment I had in my life, it was really important to find the lesson in it. And I remember always reevaluating when I would get home from a competition where I didn't skate very well. And I would always say, well, you know, what, what happened? What did I learn from this? And how can I grow from that? Right. And it was really important. And I know we talk about that all the time, but that is the key to overcoming that failure. Otherwise, if you sit in that sadness or the anger or the victimization or victimhood as we call it then you're never going to grow and i think that's people say to me jamie how how what is the difference between someone like you who's had the success you've had and someone like me you know i haven't made it yet and i said not quitting you know yeah. i didn't quit and i said I, I always tell people i wasn't the most talented figure skater in the world but i through all my adversity and all the struggles and everything I've been through that wasn't fun or easy, I said, I didn't quit. Mm. And so, you know, look inside yourself and say like, you know, what, what lights you up and what are you passionate about? And then you stick to it. You make a decision for it. You decide for it every single day when it's not convenient and when it's not comfortable every single day. Yeah. And so same thing with today. If you have a passion or you have goals, don't let this condition get you. You can, we're all, get, we're all having this condition, but don't let it have you. 
So what can you plan for down the road? And we don't know if it's gonna be six months or it's gonna be two years from now, but that's okay, right? Just have, have some kind of decision of like where you wanna be and where you wanna go. Yeah, it's interesting you say, uh, you say that about the lessons learned in, in failure. I, and, um, uh, I'm thinking right now, a lot of companies, a lot of uh, business owners are, are uh, you know, rather than giving up, they're looking at different ways of doing their businesses, yes. right? And pivoting the common word of today, right? They're pivoting, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, let me switch gears a little bit here. Jamie asked you a couple of personal things. Um, where, do sure. you, where do you find and, and get inspiration from for what you do? Oh, in many different um, facets. I, I, love, um, I love, obviously now on the social media platforms, there's so many incredible um, motivators, teachers, and, and coaches out there. Of course, Brene Brown is one of my favorites. I worked, with, worked um, in Tony Robbins' program years ago when I was skating. David and I had to follow along with some of his stuff. Um, and I'm reading a wonderful book um, right now that everything is uh, figure outable. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love it. It's actually an audio book that I'm listening to and she has exercises. Everything is figure outable. It's just fabulous. I, I really enjoy and um, I don't know, I, I really enjoy reading about how our mind works too. I was reading Michael Singer's books, um, The Untethered Soul, The Four Agreements is another great one. These are places where I just choose to read or listen to things that actually lift me up and give me more, um, I guess, more layering to my coaching because mm. it's so nice to have all this information. Like I know what I did to become successful, but it's nice to hear it in a different way sometimes. Yeah. And so listening to all this positive feedback and, 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 um, information, I just, I eat it up. I just love it. So tell me what, uh, kind of interests do you have that are, uh, non-business, uh, related, uh, what kind of things do you do? This. Well, I'm a pretty social girl, so this is, um, as much as I'm enjoying being at home with my family, um, it's really important for me to stay connected to my, my friends, so we're doing FaceTiming, so, like, I know that's not much of a hobby, but I um, enjoy being with people, um, but I, I have really enjoyed um, cooking more lately, like, we've always cooked, obviously, but I'm, I'm really using some recipes that um, I've pulled out of my my cupboard and, and my books. And it, it's actually been a lot of fun and cooking with the kids and uh, taking up a little bit of music. My son's doing guitar, playing guitar. and I, My daughter is uh, learning piano. So sitting with them and enjoying that process is also really fun. Okay. So you live a, obviously a very busy lifestyle with uh, family and work. And uh, um, how do you find the sort of the, not to use a, a phrase that's often overused, but that work-life balance, how do you find that? Well, you know what, it's all up for me, it's about scheduling and making sure that my family understands that this is when I'm working and this is when I, you've got me 100%. And it's really important that when you're not working that you are really present with the kids because you know, these things can be part of our lives a little bit too much. And I've noticed that even for myself, um, you know, always checking messages, our world, one thing I'm learning right now is like, yes, we have all these platforms to connect like this, like you and I are right now, but um, that we're sometimes there's almost too much out there now where people are getting a little bit lost in, yeah. you know, our phones and, and computers. And we got to write back everybody right now. We need an answer like five minutes ago. And, <laughs> you know, it was so much simpler when I was a little girl, everything was closed on Sundays. We didn't have cell phones and yes. And it's wonderful to be able to connect and, and have information quicker, but there's also something today that we're experiencing and that the importance not it's important that we're not doing that as much right now right yeah. so what i'm finding today actually is um people are making phone calls instead of texting people are connecting through zoom or other platforms to actually see faces and for me personally i am seeing the community all supporting each other like i feel like this is really powerful and um i don't know i i, I love that getting back to the basics yeah okay um if you had to pick one word to describe uh, yourself, what would it be and why? Playful. Um, 
I don't know. I, I, I would say that I, I just always like to be happy and positive and I just enjoy laughter and I don't take myself too seriously. Mm -hmm. And I just have kind of a childlike personality. <laughs> it's good to have. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now you obviously through your career uh, uh, traveled quite extensively. Um, in all your travels, did you have a, a favorite place that you, you went to? Oh, are you talking about when I was competing or just as just a, traveling? Uh, so whether you were competing or whether after you uh, finished uh, uh, competing, just anywhere you've been. Okay, so I've been to Japan 13 times. Oh, and wow. I know I love Japan. Love, love, love. Culture, food, everything about it. Um, but I would say at post-skating, I really enjoyed Italy. Oh. And I was just talking to my family last night and we were saying how we would love to spend two weeks traveling and go to Italy and maybe even France. Um, because my son has, you know, his dad, his background is, is French, so it'd be really cool to go there. Kids are in French immersion, so they could, they could get around very easily and help mom and dad. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I love the culture too in Italy, and we, we found it very, um, just, just beautiful, and hoping one day to get back there, but... Yeah, oh, well, that's great. Uh, that's good. Now, speaking of travel, I'm going to present a scenario to you, okay? So, um, okay. there's a small, beautiful tropical island in the middle of the ocean uh, with only one phone booth, and no other technology there. We're going to drop you off there by yourself, okay? At any time, you can use the phone to call a boat and we'll come pick you up, okay? Uh, so, okay. two questions. Uh, one, how long would it take you, do you think, before making that phone call? And secondly, uh, what would you do while you were there? Oh, I would probably make the phone call within 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and is this the phone call is to call a boat to come get me? Yeah, you bet. Oh, okay. I was thinking of calling a friend just to tell them what's happening. <laughs> um, I would probably really embrace the the moment and i would take in my surroundings i think i would i would probably as soon as the sun was starting to set i would be like come for me now <laughs> <laughs> okay i don't think I'm alone i mean i'm okay being alone but i don't want to be alone on a beach at night yeah no oh, i hear you okay is so that a good answer everybody's got their own answers like some people yeah. will yeah. It's amazing, actually. Some people can stay for weeks or want to stay for weeks. So I, mean, I guess it's all in their yeah, personality in their life, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, then. So uh, is there anything, Jamie, you'd like to add before leaving us today? Uh, I guess I just want to say to people that I, uh, you know, I understand that this is a really difficult time and it's uncomfortable. And we're, you know, we're all in this together, as we've been seeing all over the social media, uh, all over social media. And this is true. And we are a really strong country. I'm really proud to be Canadian. I'm mm -hmm. proud to, to be a part of this community of, of um, you know, there's a lot of people that we can tap into who are supportive and staying positive. So I think that's the most important thing right now is surround yourself with people who are positive and who are going to lift you up. And again, just have faith that we are going to get through this better in the end. Yeah, in the end. And <laughs> whenever that comes, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, super. Thanks for joining us uh, today, um, Mary. It was fun.